today we are demonstrating how to construct styrofoam cup sculptures. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Artprof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We're very excited to do this special stream. Some of you are going, why are you guys streaming on a Tuesday night? Well, I'll tell you the reason why we're streaming on Tuesday night, because Pickle the Pug sponsored this video. So thanks to Pickle the Pug, we are able to put on this live stream. And we just want to say thank you to Pickle for giving us this opportunity, because I always want to do more 3D and more projects and more obscure ways of working, but we got to pay the bills. <laughs> we have to keep the lights on. And so oftentimes I can't justify the time it takes, but 3D is really refreshing. Mia, when's the last time you did 3D work? I think four years ago. Yeah, I almost never work in 3D. So this is kind of refreshing, but also extremely terrifying. So thank you, everybody <laughs> cheering along. <laughs> we'll see what we can do here. I think here. you'll survive. <laughs> I think you'll be OK. <laughs> it's just nope. a styrofoam cup. How difficult can it be? It shouldn't be this intimidating, and yet it is. <laughs> well, so that's one of the reasons I really like this prompt, is that it is very accessible. And Mia, I think a lot of people don't do 3D because they don't know the tools or the materials, but it's nice that the styrofoam cup is so ordinary. I agree. I mean, I just went to Walmart and it was like with a bunch of other styrofoam things in one aisle. And I was like, this can't be that bad. It's in kitchen supplies. Like this isn't forging or anything like smelting in the garage, you know? So right, right. fine. <laughs> Also, I like that it's so inexpensive. So if you have a styrofoam cup and you totally screw it up, it's not difficult to get another one. It's not like you're hacking away at this big hunk of $3,000 marble that you pulled out of an Italian quarry. It's just very, very accessible. So tell us in the chat, who here has worked three-dimensionally and when's the last time you worked three-dimensionally? because I find it's just really makes you think differently. Do you think so, Mia? Oh yeah, oh my God. I think uh, that's that was something, I had a 3D class in my school and it, it was the most weird adjustment in my brain, I think in my whole artistic career, because I thought, oh, I'm an artist, I do, I draw. So 3D can't be that different. And it's thinking in an entire, entirely different plane you have to think in another dimensionality of art and it's you have you have to learn the language of it so that was a kind of a difficult adjustment but still kind of fun in its own way so one way all of you can start this project i do think it's easier to start with a pair of scissors i do like having a utility knife for certain things but the styrofoam, it is a little bit fragile. And so this is sort of powerful. I find the scissors just let you work faster. And I do like just cutting spontaneously without a plan. And Mia, there is something to be said about that level of play, that spontaneity, don't you think? Yeah. And I think that actually shows how kind of nervous I was about this is that I made a plan beforehand and I was like, okay, I'm going to cut all my pieces. So then I won't have to freak out and try and think on the spot. But I think after this one, which shouldn't take me that long, I'm going to start just from my brain and we'll see what happens. I'll try and go back to childhood a little bit. Maybe that will help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think all of you should do both. You should try, okay, what is it like when I have an actual plan for these? And what happens when I take my pair of scissors and I just start cutting wherever? Because I do think it's helpful to learn how to do both. And especially when you're just trying to get to know the material. Hey, what is this stuff capable of? Sometimes having too much of a plan can actually be a limitation. So it definitely is fun. 
I need the sort of moral one shape. I don't really know. I is. love that. Yours have so much energy to it. Lisa says, Mia's reminds me of a shrimp shell. Well, tell us what was your plan, Mia? Well, I'm actually going off of the art prof Flickr photos, which are really great, but I'm making a little crawdad, a little crawfish. So you'll see that come together. I thought it would be a Huge. good idea for this because the shape of the cup um, curves around kind of like the different shells of and layers of the fish um, or the crawfish. I don't know if it's actually considered a fish, uh, but yeah, I thought that would be a fun little experiment. So we are going to give you all a little bit of a design lesson because I actually did teach design a bunch of times in the past and I miss it because it's so basic design. And yet at the same time though, there are certain things that I think are important to keep in mind. And the first one is so simple that it just feels ridiculous. And that is shape. And if we look at the styrofoam cups, this shape at the bottom is inherent to the material. So here we have a bunch of circles. And I actually cut out, actually it was this piece. Okay, so this piece, I cut out a bunch of the triangles. So you can see this is where that triangular piece goes. And so after I did that, I ended up with a bunch of triangles. And then I thought, okay, maybe I should do some that are a little bit more interesting. So I made these. These are organic shapes versus, for example, these little rectangular pieces. And Mia, shape is one of those things, I just think a lot of people forget about it because it's so basic. Yeah, it's easy to overlook. Um, and I think that, at least for me, I get kind of bogged down in details a lot of the time. So I think about little shapes instead of big shapes. And I think that there are so many different areas in which you need to consider shape, like the overall composition, little pieces of each composition. So I really like what you're doing, which is just making a bunch of just shapes, like they're not anything specific, and yet they're going to come together to make an even more interesting shape. And all of you can think about, how do I go about doing this? So you can either well, it's not like there's only two options, but <laughs> you can just start with the cup and just cut into it. Okay. So th this already is a shape on its own. Now here, I deliberately cut the foam really flat. So that way I could cut actual shapes. And then that's a way for me to assemble a little bit more because Mia, the styrofoam cup, it does have an inherent curvature to it. And I do think it's nice to acknowledge that. It's like, hey, what is this material already good at? And how can I ride that wave a bit? It's like getting to know the cup. Totally. And I think if you don't like that, then you could just get a styrofoam plate or something that's flat and that you can kind of completely work on from scratch from your own brain. But there's something nice about kind of, uh, I don't know, going along with a predisposed attribute of the cup instead. It's kind of a fun challenge. Sentian says, I think I often do better when I think of my plans as quote ideas because I can feel constrained by a plan and get overcome by perfectionist frustration. Well, that's one of the reasons I really like doing this prompt without a plan because sometimes people will do a sketch for a sculpture and then when the sculpture doesn't look exactly like the sketch, they get really frustrated really easily. And so part of me not having a plan is to basically avoid that frustration. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm just peeling <laughs> holes out of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was something I was frustrated with is when you cut into it, how messy the edges were if you were using scissors or your finger. So there's stuff you learn along the way too, like what tools are best to use for materials like this. And sometimes it can add to your final product, I find. 
Oh, yeah. And it's good to be deliberate about craftsmanship because <laughs> here's a bad version. So this one, I, I cut really, really thin. I don't know. It looks like a hula dress <laughs> or something. But anyway, I didn't cut it very well. And so if I hold this up close, do you guys see how I got these wonky, sloppy looking parts? And so I didn't like that. And then I realized, oh shoot, I should have used the scissors. So there's a learning curve, but sometimes it's fun to rip it. Like Mia, sometimes I see this project online. It's a pretty common project and everything's like perfect and neat, but I, I sort of like my wreck of a cup right now. I love it. See, that's more fun. I think I'm the, I, I just have OCD. So I'm like, everything has its place and it's like a puzzle, but I think this is helping me kind of overcome that because this, this material is so unpredictable. You know, you can't be like that unless you're the best at everything. W315 says this looks so easy for noodling and experimenting. I could hoard used cups. Well, it sounds like Sentient also has some takeout cups sitting on the counter. Might have to jump into that. Seven Angelic says, looks like I've got a weapon. Yeah, if this was a metal, I think this would be pretty dangerous. That'd be, um, yeah, that'd be weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I could just like throw this at somebody. Now, here's another thing. Mia, do you ever give your sculpture a haircut? I've never done that, but now I want to. <laughs> well, so... so awesome. Here's the fun thing. Does everybody see the 10 billion scraps that are starting to accumulate? Sometimes what I do is after I make whatever I think I want to make, I'll just say, hey, look, I got all these scraps. What can I do with them? So when I cut this one, I ended up with those really thin little tendrils. So I was like, oh, well, I've got the base <laughs> of the cup. I'm going to make that the base and then I'm just going to glue all the scraps to make this, I don't know what this is, it's grass, but then I was like, oh, they're all too long. So I'm just going to give it a haircut. So we have some different legs. <laughs> and that's where you can have repetition of a shape, but the shift of scale makes it more dynamic because Mia, how are these short pieces helping the composition be more varied? Oh man, I think that any variety you have in thick and thin and wiry or long, it, it just makes it a lot more dynamic. Like I think that if all of those pieces were just as thick as some of the other scraps that you have, it would look clunky and kind of have different characteristics where this one's kind of fun. It looks like a cartoon character. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking maybe this could go on top. <laughs> that would look really dumb. It looks like a house plant, like one of those air dry plants in those, uh, the ones you hang. Those are, that's fun. I think I am going to glue that on top just to be extra silly. We also have a question from AA who is saying, how are you deciding the shapes you want? Is it as you go or is there an idea you are all going for? Well, I think the important thing is to think about what is the personality of the shape. So for example, we have this triangle here, which is pointy, but it's still blocky. And if you compare that to this, which is almost a, is it pentagon? Not a pentagon. Trapezoid. Is it trapezoid? I don't remember. I think so. Anyway. <laughs> we should <Yeah>. know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one that's very organized and rigid. This one's very flowy and very round. And so I do think it's important to think about, okay, is the shape I have, is it organic and natural looking? Or does it look more, say, industrial the way this does? And so actually I had a whole bunch. I just cut a bunch of rectangles and a bunch of squares. 
And so just by nature of these shapes being like that, it's just going to look more architectural because, Mia, I really think shapes have personalities. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think that that's why so many children's cartoons, you see the square be kind of, you know, like nerdy, cares about rules, where the circle might be more bouncy and jovial, like, I, or jovial. Yeah, I think that's why is that there's so many attributes that you can just give to those. And each uh, sculpture has a little personality. Yeah, this one's kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the one I just made. It's like, I don't know. It's like a mosaic gone wrong. Like, it's like kind of dorky. <laughs> I feel like you'd see that at the MoMA. Like you'd see that on the wall at the MoMA. <laughs> Just call it contemporary. <laughs> exactly. Ginger says, interesting how Clara is going abstract. Mia is doing a lobster. When I first saw this prompt, I thought it was supposed to be abstract. It can be either. Sometimes I do make it abstract when I'm working with students because I want them to not get bogged down in terms of, oh, it has to look like a rabbit. And sometimes it's easier to think about shape when you're not distracted by that, but it doesn't matter. It's up to you guys, however you want to play it. So Mia, check this out. Did you know if you are careful enough, you can actually bend the styrofoam? I'm it? trying. I've tried. I mean, I tried that earlier when I was pre-cutting my pieces. And let me tell you, I have so many scraps over here that are just <laughs> ruined <laughs> or not ruined, I should say, but for this project it did not go well. <laughs> you have to do it slowly. If you do it too fast, it's going to break and you won't get that curve. But isn't that really pretty? I love that. It looks like a plant. So, this is so weird. I never expected styrofoam to look like, I don't know, natural things. This is just, it's so, it goes it against cool? everything styrofoam is. So I made these two. This looks sort of like a gesture hat, but look, I made little legs. So this is like a little stand. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. It gets boring just holding the glue sometimes, but I don't want it to come apart. <laughs> well, this is interesting. 10,000 Crows says, had no idea you could do this to a styrofoam cup. And we also have Lisa who says, it's funny that we all had these expectations. Well, Mia, I think that's what's important about this prompt is to make people realize, hey, I can start with something as boring and as rigid as this and come up with something really wacky like this. I feel like this looks like a really messed up tree fungus. <laughs> it does, it looks like lichen or something like that. I know. So what I was thinking, I'm gonna rip it up into a few more pieces and hmm, I'm gonna think about how to overlap them because overlapping is really helpful. One thing in front of another in 3D can be a really good thing. Oh dear, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I got something, I think. Okay, there. Now we have, uh, I don't know, something. <laughs> I'm just gonna take my scraps and start tossing stuff on it. <laughs> That's good, I'm almost done with this, then I'm gonna start like messing around. <laughs> Oh, you're just gonna be like so pretty, Mia. I I love little crawdads. I love them. They're so fun. Okay, this is like a really bad piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> it's like Diary of a Wimpy Kid cheese on the ground exactly. for months. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa says, any really wild results from students past? Well, you know what's really funny, actually? I think some of the more interesting projects I've seen are the ones that are really simple. 
which Mia, everybody thinks, oh, the sculpture that's the best is the most complicated one, but that's not true in design. No. All the time. No. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why so many like graphic, oh, it's not like right. <laughs> so many graphic design um, elements are just basics. Like what is the best shape and what other shape can we put it next to? It's so basic. And if you get those um, attributes right, if you get those characteristics right, it, it looks good. It's successful. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> I was going to put this triangle on top, but I feel like that sort of ruins the continuity. Or maybe I just need to add more. I don't know. Hard to tell. Pat's asking, can you bend styrofoam with a heat gun? Would that create toxic fumes? I don't know that I want to find out. <laughs> so <laughs> proceed with caution. Anybody here who is getting curious about that type of thing? Yeah, I hope not. Sen <laughs> yeah. Sentient saying, what kind of paint would you use if you wanted to add color to these? This is the type of thing I wouldn't paint them. I would actually spray paint it. Because Mia, why do you think spray paint would work better than say just painting this with a brush? Well, I think that the brush, if the paint is any bit transparent or translucent, you're going to see brush strokes and it might get really distracting and it might scrape off, off the paint on the styrofoam rather than just apply it. Whereas spray painting, if you just spray it on there, it's on and there's nothing, there's no friction there that will take it off. Also with spray paint, it's very easy to get into the little nooks and crannies because if you look at my hula dress air plant, I mean, look at all these crevices. Like this would be so hard to get into with a brush. And I don't know, sometimes a lot of people don't like to paint 3D stuff because they like the color of the material. But generally speaking, you can spray paint a lot of things, which is very helpful. Thank you, 10,000 Crows. We so much appreciate the super sticker. That Keep those me. super stickers coming. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and help us stick around, everybody. Now, another thing, Mia, that I think is very important that doesn't get talked about enough in sculpture is negative space. So negative space, here too, I just cut up these rings. It's basically the space that's inside. Okay, so here's the form. This is the negative space. And negative space, it's like people don't think about it. They just focus on the sculpture. But negative space is very important. And if you think about it, think about how can you get that negative space to behave differently? It can work out really well. And Mia, I think sometimes it's like, you can't touch negative space so people don't think about it, but it does help. Oh yeah. And I also think you find out that less is more if you consider negative space as part of the final piece. Um, you won't try and fill everything up. You'll kind of leave Ow. room. Oh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I just, it's inevitable. <laughs> Art is a dangerous profession, guys. <laughs> Stay safe out there. Says the woman with the tufting gun. <laughs> it's a, that's a weapon. That's that a, a weapon. weapon. I, I am fine in, uh, during a home invasion though. I would be fine. <laughs> yeah, you would. Although I have a pretty scary looking wood mallet that I use for carving. I think that would come in handy. Okay, so this is a piece unlike this, which is pretty solid looking. This piece has a lot of movement to it. And so one thing, Mia, I like to think about is how fast is my sculpture? Is it a sculpture that's very stocky or 
Is it a sculpture that is very dynamic? I don't know. I guess you can think about it like an organism almost. Because that one looks like a cyclone. That one looks speedy. It does. And overlaps galore. <laughs> Oh my god, ow, ow. Oh, I totally yeah. forgot I put a piece there. Ow. Oh no. Oh, shoot. Ow, that would hurt. You should have a bowl of ice next to you. I should. I just, I never use hot glue. And so I always forget. Like, my grandma, uh, my grandma has worked with hot glue so often that she can just touch, she can just touch it and move it around straight out of the glue gun it is some what? of the most it's so jarring she just goes right in she's like oh yep it's fine <laughs> i would be crying <laughs> so here's another thing i'm gonna weave this into the other piece is this cool look at this so i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna weave it in between like this that's cool Isn't that's that like cool? a cool ornament or something that's great Ooh, it's so thin that I really can get it to twist. I might not even need that much glue. I can just keep moving it around. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> now I'm going to have fun. Now I'm going to put like little designs on this guy. He looks like a yeah? shy lobster. He looks so shy. Oh. He's like covering his face. <laughs> Oh, yours is so pretty. I uh, I like him. I think he's fun. <laughs> I like him too. So here's the other thing is sometimes you don't even need that much glue. If you just arrange things and sometimes less glue is better because, oh man, hot glue can be messy looking, right? Oh yeah, oh my God. You never realize it until you put it on and then it's like, oh, it's ruined. <laughs> Can't get it back. Oh, it's the saddest thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Actually, this isn't quite a haircut, but I'm going to cut a couple parts because what I want to do is have more flexibility to weave and push these around. And doing this will help me do that. Yeah, I really feel like I'm weaving with this stuff. It's so cool. I'm surprised it's not breaking. Well, I think it's just so thin that it's incredibly flexible. So I think I'm reaping the rewards of that. <laughs> yes, I do need finger guards. I'm such a wreck when it comes to keeping things clean. So we have this new dog, Buddy, who you've probably seen on Instagram. And I said to my kid the other day, hey, you know, maybe we should trim his hair at the back of his legs now and then because it seems like that area is growing faster. She's like, mama, you are not going anywhere near him. <laughs> to cut his hair is that because you you're not the best hairdresser or she's afraid you're gonna hurt yourself that's a good question it's probably a little bit of both <laughs> <laughs> ow this still hurts <laughs> i'm in so much pain I, oh. I burnt my hand the other day too i was making um i accidentally made four more portions of grits that I needed to. Oh no. <laughs> and, and so I was stirring them panicking, trying to figure out what to do. And it spat up at me and it totally burned my thumb. <gasps> yeah, it like burned it. I don't know if you can see that mark on my thumb, but yes. not feel good. Well, so another thing that I'm thinking about, Mia, as I'm weaving this piece is I'm thinking about density. So there's this one coil down here that I've made. And 
actually I might glue this together to make sure it stays. So th this is one piece here, which is like very tightly wound up and very dense. And then I have this next part, which is very simple. So I think getting that contrast is pretty important in sculpture. So it's not all clunky or all the same density because it gets boring kind of fast. Ariel says, Clara, be careful. We're worried for you. You and Mia are making such cool things. Yeah, well, there's a trade off for that. All those <laughs> dangerous tools. Your precious cargo, though, Clara. You have to, you have to be careful. We can't survive without you. <gasps> oh, man, this is such a mess. <laughs> I think I need to start gluing more. I was hoping I'd be able to just let it stay but i think it's just moving around too much so i think i gotta get going on the glue i like this little ridge in the cup like the top part has this ridge it's kind of oh fun. i wasn't what are you gonna do with it that? i'm gonna try and use it <laughs> that's smart i do really like hot glue it's just I'm not really the most careful person, <laughs> so <laughs> you can see why I have a lot of accidents here. <laughs> so I was thinking, I got to come back to my hula hoop <laughs> hair plant. I was thinking it'd be fun to overlap these because there are so many of them. They're sort of boring right now. So... Maybe if I just stick glue in random places and let them overlap. I love how many of them there are. I know. Ha! <laughs> Manette says it looks like a tangled slinky. Oh, yes, it's a very messed up slinky. <laughs> Who here had a slinky growing up? Did you have one, Mia? Oh, yeah. And it got destroyed in like the first half hour every time because I would send I mean, it right down the stairs <laughs> I mean I don't understand how those would last longer than like two days <laughs> Ginger says you have so many going on all at once well but see that's what's sort of fun I was getting kind of annoyed <laughs> with this one so i was like oh, okay let's go over here instead i love having multiple projects at once for that exact reason i get bored so fast yeah or frustrated <laughs> whichever one comes first Ow! oh my god i can't do this mia i'm not meant for hot glue guns this is like a hazard <laughs> it is i'm just a walking hazard <laughs> wait there's low temp glue guns did you know about that mia um i don't know anything about anything <laughs> so no i did not know that all right i'll have to look into it because uh yeah i got a pretty good I got a good battle wound today on the live stream. <laughs> you have to, yeah, that'd be a good investment for you, I think. I think so. I don't like where this went. Maybe I should just rip up the bottom. I feel like it's, it's like too sloppy to be organized, but then the craftsmanship is such a wreck. I feel like I should just screw it up. I think I'm just gonna I kind of I mean yeah I think when all else fails just destroy it <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this look look I'm gonna just like crumble it on top ah! <laughs> look at that thing unleash all of so, your anger <laughs> it looks so funny and bad <laughs> yeah, but now now it's like a creature look at this it's like a 
That is like fun. That. Now it looks like it's like I don't know. It looks <laughs> it looks like a squid or something. I think so. It's like a really messed up squid though. I think I killed it. Oh well. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> Angelic saying, you have any tweezers, you could use them to place the pieces and save your fingers. Do you guys really think I have the patience to use tweezers? <laughs> that That's my husband's department. He is extremely detail-oriented and does things very precisely. That is so not me. I'm a total cave woman. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back to this one, this weird curly one. I think this is the one that I like the best out of the ones I made so far. It's, it's nice and lyrical, you know? I like that one. Ooh, your tail is so pretty. I'm trying to add like little, um, I'm trying to get the camera to pick it up, but little uh, details on it now for fun. Cute. I can't wait to see a good photo of it since the live stream is is accurate with the imagery. And it's just white on white on white. Right. <laughs> well, if anybody needs help photographing 3D artwork, you know we got you covered. 3D is hard to photograph well, and a lot of people need help with it for portfolios. And it's not that hard, but you need to know a couple of things. So just go to our website and YouTube and we'll give you the answers at the back of the textbook. Ugh. I feel like mine is very unstable. That That's the other problem, Mia, with 3D work is like you have to worry about, oh my gosh, is my piece gonna collapse? Well, a good thing about that is that you could just hang that from the ceiling and your problems are solved. <laughs> oh, that is super smart. Oh my gosh, that's what it is. It's a hanging piece. Ow. Oh my God. This is not my <laughs> material. This was your idea. <laughs> I know, but that doesn't mean I'm good at it. <laughs> I mean, most of the time I assign projects and the students make stuff that's way better than anything I could ever make. Manette says, referred my sister to your video about taking photos. She started making jewelry, thinking about selling to fund buying supplies. Her photos of her pieces have already improved. Yay, I love hearing about that. Manette, that is wonderful. Because, I mean, Mia, you know this, when you're selling work, if you've got a bad photo, forget about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like one of the most important things is because people see something and they're like, oh, lighting's not good. Pass. <laughs> no, thanks. Well, and you know something, because I always photograph work for like fine art portfolios, I never thought about trying to, I guess, dress the set for my sculpture or jewelry because in the fine art world, you're supposed to just make it really clear and blank. But Mia, you've done a lot of pieces where you've taken photos and you'll put like leaves in the background and stuff. I think that's super cute. Yeah, I think also it's, uh, I kind of like the more casual realm of social media, stuff like that, where it's not as... Um, uh, not, I don't want to say that the fine art world is stale, but it's not as just like kind of blank where yeah. I, I like kind of having complimenting things in the background. And then it tells people a bit more about the vibe you're going for in your work. I think it's kind of fun. Okay. I feel better about this balance. Okay. See this? Do you see my negative space? I'm very proud of my negative space. <laughs> So I have big negative space, but I also have tiny negative space and I have areas of density and have large areas that come off. So I'm, I'm happy with this one. This one's pretty good. This one was just, oh my God, I feel like I just need to rip 
the whole bottom off or something. The airplane part is cute. Yeah, I'm gonna just do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna tear it off. <laughs> it, just, it just looked really stupid. See, that's much cuter. Now it's just like a little air plant in a little pot that looks much better. I love okay. it. I, love it. I, I love like it. that yeah. a lot. <laughs> Sentient, I am in pain. Like, this finger hurts. I'm not going to show you, but it hurts. <laughs> Kong Cukes asking about doing a video on Colograph printmaking. Well, convenient that you ask that because that is actually one of the topics that is on our wish list. When you sponsor a video, we have a wish list of topics that we have been dying to produce but haven't had the time to do it. You can also propose a video. I don't think it's that exciting, but if you want me to draw Chris Pine, I'll do it for you. He's not remotely as awesome as Benedict, but I'll do it if you sponsor the video. We'll draw <laughs> Chris Pine or whatever less worthy male white actor <laughs> there is compared to mine. Um, so yeah, think about that because you know something, everybody, the reason this stream happened it's because of Pickle the Pug. Thank you so much for your support, Pickle, and making it possible for us to bring more of these live streams into our calendar. Please join Mia and I. We will be in the Artcroft Discord, hanging out in the post live streams channel, typing and chatting about all kinds of things. And we wanna say a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. You are the ones, like Pickle the Pug, who are keeping the lights on for us because I love doing this stuff, but we have to pay bills and oftentimes bills take up more time than this. But if I could just do this, this really is better than making ads for corporate companies. I just hate that. Sorry, corporate sponsors. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, that's like really not very nice, but I'd so much rather make this because this is the content for all of you and it's not an ad, it's us making things and learning and teaching together. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.